morning, I'm Donna Hestwood, and I would like to do our devotion for this week. And like you, I've been experiencing some serious changes in my routine with the pandemic. When it first began, I thought, okay, a couple of weeks, and I'm good for that. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. I have things I want to do around the house. I'm such an introvert, I should be absolutely good with this. I have food to eat. I'm very blessed. I wasn't really too concerned about it. I've done all my social distancing. I've cleaned all the things. I've worn my mask. I've watched the news. And I've seen some things in the news that, and other places that really disturbed me. Things like selfishness, anger, apathy, intolerance, to just to name a few. They built up from annoyance and irritation, and I didn't like all that. But you know, those weren't things I got from the news. Those are me. When I stripped away all my activity of doing, and I've got to do this and that, I was left with me. Oh, the news isn't so different from me. I'm not nearly as nice as I'd like to think I am. But we read in, in scripture about the Israelites during the Exodus. They had been in Egypt for over 400 years. They were so ready, so ready for God to fulfill his promises to them about the promised land. They could have their own life. They could have their own land. They were done. They wanted out of there. But you know, God did not send them directly from slavery to the promised land. They went into the wilderness. Talk about a reality change. They had a totally different life at that point. Going to one place to the other, when God told them to move, they moved. When God signaled them to stay, they stayed. And their frustration and their anger and their impatience, they w began to wish they were back in good old Egypt. Exodus 16, the people's complaints really got intense. We read that in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Aaron and Moses. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into this desert to starve the entire assembly to death. Or in Numbers 15, we remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. And the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. Really? Sat around pots of meat? Had all we wanted to eat? Isn't there a little selective amnesia here? How could they be sitting around? They were slaves. Slaves worked hard, got little. And what about the part in Egypt about kill all your newborn baby boys? They wanted to go back to that? Really? I don't want to spend the next 40 years in the wilderness waiting for the other side of this experience. But I have to understand that my idea of getting through it may be way different from what God has in store for us. We really don't know, do we? Maybe we need to really go deep and think about what we want to go back to. The way it was? Or maybe the way we think it could be or should be. And all this extra time has let me consider some of those things. I've been a lot more deliberate about how I experience Sabbath. Thanks to online, I'm listening to two or three sermons each week. But I'm looking up the scriptures. I'm thinking about them all week. I'm not worried about the video, the sound, the lights. I'm not worried about what I have to do next or where are we going for lunch. I'm going to my kitchen counter for lunch. It's easy. But every meal I get is a special gift because I know people don't all have that. And I am blessed. I have a lot more time to pray. And I have been. But instead of taking it as a group, oh Lord, take care of these people, it's more like this person and that person and that need. 
I can ponder on those a lot more than I sometimes do when, when I'm at my busy. We all know that. Maybe in the course of this season of change, I can begin to work through some of those characteristics of mine that I don't like. Remember the intolerance and the impatience? Yeah, maybe I can mellow the frustration, expand my tolerance. But other things, I just need to grow. Grow in my gratitude, grow in my prayer life, make it a permanent change. And be so grateful for the gift of scripture and godly messages. I don't believe God caused this situation, but I have absolutely no doubt that he is working within it and within us. Do we understand all this? No. Do we like it? Probably not. Can we control it? Not like we think we should. Not the way we want to. But maybe we are where God can get our attention. It's kind of like the season of Lent, isn't it? A time to think, a time to reflect. We have a wonderful opportunity here to grow closer to God. I hope we're all using it. In this wilderness of the new and the uncertain, maybe we can be about more than just, is it over yet? Are we there yet? I'm done. Maybe it's, okay, God, talk to me. Let me know. Getting back to normal may not look the way I want it to, but take us into a new normal. And maybe, just maybe you two have some issues in your life you'd like to take a look at. I don't know, but most of us do. Go deep. We might end up in a very different place. And I'd like to close with the best blessing that Aaron used for the Israelites. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a great day.